Dark City. Why not start off the new year reviewing a 1998 neo-noir detective thriller film directed by the guy who made The Crow and who also made iRobot and Gods of Egypt. So he's pretty hit or miss with his filmography. But look, I haven't want to talk about this movie for a while because this movie was the precursor to The Matrix and actually came out a year before The Matrix. It did the majority of those ideas those movies do. At least the first three. Better <laughs> and much more. It's not as, I would say, entertaining as The Matrix. These movies, I feel like, do get unfairly compared because they're two completely different vibes. This is a tech of noir. The Matrix is poppy action. But this movie just clicks for me a bit more. I don't know why. Uh, for one, the director's cut of this movie. Never watched a theatrical cut. That movie is, for some reason, the studio decided, you know what, let's just put our fingers all up in this and really mess this thing up and this guy's vision up for this film. And it really did show in that pro in the finished product. Well, I, do don't, I don't hate the theatrical cut. I definitely don't love it. The director's cut is like 12 minutes longer, which you would say isn't much. Most director's cuts can be from like an hour to maybe two hours longer. But those 12 minutes really do add a lot to this world. And they really do add a lot to this film. Now, I haven't gotten into what this film's about. This takes place in well, a dark city, uh, no pun intended, where there's no sun, there's nothing going on. These people keep falling asleep and then waking up with different memories and different lives and different ideas of what they're doing with themselves. It's all being run by these telekinetic beings I believe they're known as the Strangers. Here led by Mr. Book in this. And they all have their different Mr. names. Their main one is Mr. Hand because he always because because he always waves his hand. Um they have telekinetic powers. And they also use Kiefer Sutherland, who is this scientist, psychologist, whatever you would call him, to wipe the memories of these people and give them new memories that these strangers wants them to have. And this all takes place on this kind of flat earth. Which, if you're a flat earther, it makes you so much more wanting that, which, meh. But it kind of, it's kind of like that, but it's also like, it's a city in the middle of a desert, like the middle of space. It's strange. It's a very strange place. Um, but our main character of John Murdoch in this, who is experiencing these, he, he was one of the people who they experimented on, who just didn't really cooperate with him. He didn't do what they asked. And he ended up getting some of their abilities. He has since left his wife, but he doesn't remember who she is, being played by Jennifer Connelly, who plays Emma in this film. He doesn't know what's going on there. We have the detectives in this movie. Detective, well, I guess it's Inspector Frank, being played by William Hurt, who is trying to find John and who thinks he's killing all these hookers and he's going on this big rampage. And so these peop these beings, what we find out is they're distracting, they're trying to distract the whole world they've created away with him. They want him, they want John, because they want him to be one of them. But they also want to distract the main people of their world, so and then they will have complete control and they won't even suspect that something's going on. But he, Murdoch, wants to prove that something's happening in this place. And Because why is he able to push things and why is he able to do anything with his mind and make doors and whatnot? And, yeah, like I said, going back to this movie, they really don't make them like they used to. Um, 90s sci-fi was definitely something else, and this movie proved that for me. Going back to Dark City, I really remember why I love 90s movies. And while they weren't the best, they sure as hell had ideas. And you're bringing in the guy who made the crow in this. How is it not going to be at least watchable? Even his worst movie, in my opinion, Gods of Egypt, is watchable. This movie, while being pretty heavy in ideas, and sometimes it does kind of get buried over its own weight, it still works. It still really does work. You really do feel the human angle with these characters, and that's what our antagonists are want to know. They want, they stole a bunch of humans, and they genetically made them so, and then they can go inside their brains and figure out what makes them tick and what makes them real, because they want to have that a part of themselves. What they don't realize is the human soul is not in the brain, it's in the heart, and it becomes their downfall. <laughs> and so then John becomes 
over the entire place, the entire, I guess, quadrant of this weird noir city of sorts. And let's talk about the direction in this movie. The direction is so good. The set layout is absolutely baller. It's insane. I love the way this world looks. I love the way everything in this movie works. It looks so good. And it has that kind of Batman 89 tone to it. If it wasn't, if I didn't know any better, I would think Tim Byrne made this. But you can feel the Crow vibes in this movie with the way the city is laid out, the way the dialogue works. The dialogue in this is very, they say what they're feeling, but you can feel the emotion behind it in their way. Nothing is going to be some of the Crow's dialogue like it can't rain forever. It's one of the most powerful lines in cinema, I feel. But there's some pretty damn good stuff in this movie. And the acting is very good, especially for the character of John. Great acting. Jennifer Connelly, an actress that is usually hit or miss for me. She's usually, she's either amazing in acting or she's completely, well, uh, Hulk 2003. Um, but here, she is so good. <laughs> she is very good. She betrays this person who has felt like she's losing her husband, but doesn't realize that, oh, he was never really my husband to begin with. It was just a memory that was implanted in my head. And it's really sad. The direct, the original cut of this movie, real, the opening scene of it, we have a monologue from Keith Richards Southern, who basically explains the entire plot of the film. And it's so, it takes away every bit of mystery. In a director's cut, the plot is not explained. And... You have to really figure it out. You wake up with John. You figure out what's going on with him and his past. And why he's being treated certain ways. And why is he on the run. And why is people talking to him like this. And why these bald men in these uh, trench coats. And these top hats are coming after him. And it's really enthralling. And I'm pretty sure that if the director's cut of this made it to theaters. And not to theatrical. It would have made more money. This movie really did palm upon release, which is why we've never got any sequels for this film, or any remix. I'm kind of grateful for that. I'm kind of happy. I don't think you can make this movie in nowadays climate, because yeah, while this movie does use CGI, it also has a very practical feel to it. It feels very real. It feels very lived in. The world feels like you can walk onto this set, and you can meet these characters. You can experience this world for yourself. So it makes for a very like engaging film. I feel like nowadays most of it will be CGI and it, it just wouldn't work. And yeah, while well, the CGI in this movie isn't great, it was again 1998. And they did do the pretty genius tactic, which they do a lot nowadays, of hiding the CGI in the dark. Because as, you know, as a filmmaking technique, if you put your kind of questionable effects in a dark environment, they won't be as noticeable. This movie does that. Well, they still are kind of noticeable because, I mean, I did watch this on a 4K Ultra HD TV. So I was able to notice the little green screen outlines and how some hair follicles just didn't look right. And it just didn't look real. It still worked for me. The main antagonist besides, like, our big, huge one who we fight at the end, Mr. Hand. So good. He is such an... Anytime they get that little needle thing that it destroys your memories, it is scary as hell. <laughs> and... It may just be me because I'm afraid of needles, but man, it is insane how scary that is whenever he does that or whenever they anyone else does in the film. It just feels so weird. And like the scene where we start off with this couple and they're clearly a, some people who just don't have a lot of money and they come in there, they redo their entire life, they redo their entire thing and they become these rich assholes in a matter of seconds. And it's like, damn. But whenever they stuck that thing inside their heads, it was like, oh my god, I don't want to, this world is scary. <laughs> um, and the whole bald aesthetic of this is kind of, it's, it's bald isn't scary, but here it kind of is. <laughs> um, it just feels otherworldly. It doesn't feel human, which is the point of these characters, where they're in this long black leather, and they have all these pipes going all around them, and you have this giant face that reveals a clock that stops time, and... People are always wondering why it's always dark, and it's such a it's such a mystery box of a movie, but in a good way. It really does work. The ending where John kind of becomes a uh, ruler of this place, and he meets up with Emma later on after her memory's been erased, and has to start a new life. It's good, it's kind of poetic, but it's also like, man, I kind of would have preferred a little bit of a darker ending. But that's not to say Dark Cities isn't great, because this movie is really great. 
There is maybe some plot inconsistencies and whenever Keith or Sutheran has to explain on a boat about literally every plot element in this film. It is a bit weird. Like, why? Why are we doing this right now? But those are just nitpicks. This movie's great. I love it. Um, I do like it more than The Matrix, and that's surprising for me because I do really love The Matrix. This movie is better, though. It really is. And I can kind of watch anything about this movie. I want to start watching more behind-the-scenes stuff on this film because I want to know how the hell was this made? <laughs> like, what happened? But anywho. So, Dark City. Great film. And I will probably give it an A.